As we saw in the last video, on the chariot card we see the symbol of a spinning top depicted on the shield between the sphinxes representing the male and female twin souls. This spinning top is representing the vortex created by the upper and lower energetic forces merging in the middle at the ethereal heart. The winged disc on top of the shield is representing our conscious connection to the divine transmuted through the sun, also connected to the third eye vortex and the wings are representing the ethereal. The spinning top is also featured in Judaism as an important symbol connected to the eight-day festival of lights. This spinning top is called a dreidel and has letter symbols inscribed on four sides, Nun, Gimel, Hay and Shin. These symbols are depicting the energetic and ethereal connection within each soul to God consciousness. Each letter symbolically interlocks with the other and together they create the ethereal vortex between the souls and God. In the Electric Universe model, they have proven that the sun could actually be powered externally and in 1972, Ralph Jurgens wrote, The known characteristics of the interplanetary medium suggest not only that the sun and the planets are electrically charged, but that the sun itself is the focus of a cosmic electric discharge, the probable source of all its radiant energy. Researcher and electrical engineer Eric Dollard posits that not only is the sun powered externally, but in the middle it contains a black hole. So it seems alternative modern scientists that have had the courage to move outside of the confines of establishment science are now confirming what hermetics and the ancients already knew thousands of years ago. The universe is electric and so are we. So let us look in more detail to the symbols on the dreidel. First we have none. None is connected to the Hebrew word for snake and snake in Aramaic is none. None is also one of the seven letters which receive a special crown when relaying the Torah. And let us not forget the Torah in its truest form is symbolic for the words of God. So we see that within this word and symbol none we have a connection to the snake and wisdom. This connection can also be found with the snake relaying divine wisdom to Eve in the Garden of Eden, which is also symbolically depicted on the lover's card. In ancient Egypt, the serpent goddess Wadjet was symbolic for knowledge and she was known as having the all-seeing eye of wisdom. In Gnosticism, the serpent was connected to wisdom and was said to be the embodiment of wisdom transmitted to Sophia. Therefore, none is referring to the divine wisdom being relayed from the divine male soul through the female intellect. The next letter symbol on the dreidel is Gimel, and as we have covered the path of Gimel in the previous videos, we now understand that this symbol is showing the path and connection between the ethereal heart and the third eye. This is also the path that connects these two points and shows we do not open the third eye and meet God until we have opened our heart. This means living as a soul aligned with truth. Only then does the heart actuate the path to the third eye, pineal gland, and the soul moves beyond Daleth, the door, and the physical body is shed. This is represented in the number 13, which is the number for the path of Gimel. Next we have the symbol of hay, which is comprised of a Dalith and a Yad. So here is where we see the connection of Dalith, which equates to the third eye pineal gland, and Gimel. The Yad represents God, therefore hay represents when the Dalith and the Yad meet through the correct thought, speech and action, as hay is also connected to these three actions. Hay is also the name God is referred to when his true name is not spoken. So we are seeing the gateway to the crown or God consciousness represented in this symbol for hay. And the Kabbalah states that the Daleth and the Yad only meet through correct thought, speech and action. So again, we see that it is with these attributes of the aligned soul that one gains access through Daleth, the door. And finally, we have Shin. Shin is symbolic for the fire and life force that emanates from the spiritual heart and mind of divine consciousness within Orion. For within this manifested consciousness of the Creator, the heart and mind are united into one. It is written in the Zohar that the eyes of the head and the most holy ancient one are two in one, equal whichever watch and sleep not. 
In Kabbalah, the three lines of the Shin are also interpreted as intellect, emotion and Kesa, which is related to will. When the Shin is represented as Kesa, symbolic for will or mental projection, it states that 620 rays of light are imparted to the world through the three channels of the Shin. However, these three lines of Shin are also symbolic for the Trinity, as Kabbalists use the letter Shin to signify the Trinity of the first three Sephiroth on the Tree of Life. Kitha, Chokmah and Bina. So we can see Shin is connected to the Sephiroth Kitha, symbolic of God consciousness within Orion, and the twin souls are represented by Chokmah and Bina. Therefore Shin encompasses all the conscious and emotional aspects of God as well as the Trinity. So it is clear that the dreidel is much more than just a simplistic spinning top, but is in fact a very profound object with hidden knowledge locked within the symbolism. The dreidel and the spinning top on the shield are referring to the connection between the heart and consciousness of our souls and the heart and consciousness of the divine. It is also symbolic for the ethereal, energetic and emotional processes involved in this connection, for it is through correct thought, speech and action that we reach our full potential and divinity. The chariot driver, like the angel on the lover's card, and also the hierophant and the justice card, are all symbolic of the intermediate consciousness between the soul and the divine. Each aspect of this intermediate consciousness has a different role and process in the evolution and ascent of the soul back to God consciousness. The chariot aspect of the third consciousness is one of the divine force that guides the twin souls upon their destined path. We see upon his belt that there are five notches. This is symbolic for the covenant the soul has with the divine, as we saw the number five hierophant card represented. The castles in the background are symbolic for the kingdom of heaven, and we see they are positioned behind the curtain that depicts the ethereal plane where the creator resides. The keys to the kingdom of heaven are bestowed through knowledge. This knowledge is the understanding of the truth about ourselves and in doing so we unlock the shackles that bind us to the material plane. Those who seek and discover this truth will know this kingdom. For as this ancient Egyptian proverb tells us, the kingdom of heaven is within you and whoever shall know thyself shall find it. The chariot driver displays a square on his chest at the heart under a six-pointed star. The square is symbolic of the root chakra, and within the symbolism for the root chakra, which is also known as the Maladhara, there is a square. And when we add the sides of the square and the triangle within it, together, we get the number seven. As mentioned previously, the root chakra is connected to the number seven on the ancient Egyptian number key and represents the first gate back to God consciousness. The six-pointed star above the square is representing the hexagram and as discussed previously is symbolic of the consciousness of the creator manifest into matter. There are two crescents on the driver's shoulders. These are also symbolic for the ethereal realm, as the moon is the ruler of the ethereal, just as the sun rules the physical plane. Within each of the crescents there is a face in profile, one dark and the other light. This is symbolic of the ethereal forces of energy in the polarity of positive and negative. This polarity of energetic forces is also symbolized within the pillars Jochum and Boaz on the High Priestess card. The light and dark faces are also relating to the male and female twin soul and line up with a corresponding sphinx. Upon the head of the chariot driver is a crown with an eight-pointed star, symbolic of the immortal soul and also a connection to God's source at the third eye. If we include the five spikes upon his crown, this gives us the number 13. And now we have another connection to the number 13 and the crown chakra. The curtain behind the chariot driver is symbolic of the veil between the physical and ethereal planes. But unlike the single curtain on the High Priestess and Justice card, there is another set of curtains symbolizing the different levels within the ethereal plane. As we have discussed in previous videos, there exists an ethereal plane and physical plane which our souls move between throughout our incarnations. However, there are many layers within this ethereal plane and each plane becomes more refined as the ascent through these planes nears God consciousness. In Kabbalah, these different levels are called Ain, the vacuum of pure spirit, Ain Sof, the limitless and boundless, and Ain Sof, 
aura, the limitless light. These levels can also be related to the density of matter as it transmutes from the mental creation of God consciousness to be eventually manifest onto the physical plane as matter. On the Kabbalah tree of life, the ethereal body equating to the chariot card is symbolized in the tetrahedron, encompassing the trinity at the bottom of the tree. Christians refer to this tetrahedron symbol as the shield of the trinity and it can be found throughout their religious art symbolism. On the Kabbalah tree of life, this bottom tetrahedron is relating to each twin soul that is manifest from Ketha as the Trinity and is now in an ascent back up through the seven gates to God consciousness to be crowned at Ketha. The Kabbalah tetrahedron is also a number seven, for if we add all the parts in the Sephirot together, we get 34. Three and four equate to seven. We can also see that all the parts of the soul as the trinity are represented in each of the sephirot on the tetrahedron. Sephirot number 8, Hod, represents the male and is directly connected to the sephirot Gevara. Hod is ruled by Mercury, the Roman god of wisdom, messages, communication and prophecy. He was also a guide for souls to the underworld, so we see a connection to the ethereal here too. Mercury is also directly related to Hermes, and they are both symbolically depicted with winged heels and the caduceus. The number seven sephirot, Netzach, is directly connected to the sephirot, Chesed, and related to the female twin soul. This sephirot is ruled by Venus, the goddess who encompassed all the feminine attributes of love, beauty, sex and fertility. In Greek mythology, she was known as Aphrodite, who was also connected to the dove and pomegranate. It was said Aphrodite, the goddess of love, was seduced by Hermes with the help of Zeus. So in mythology, we see the connection between the ruling planets of these two sephirot representing the twin souls and Zeus representing Orion and God consciousness. The bottom sephirot is number 10, Malkuth, and is ruled by the sun cross. It is said Malkuth encompasses the divine source present in both heaven and earth. Unlike the other nine sephirot, Malkuth is an attribute of God which does not emanate from God directly, rather it emanates from God's creation when that creation reflects and expresses God's glory from within itself. This is speaking of the divine light carried within the souls. When relating this sephirot to the Christian shield of the Trinity, it is known as the Spiritus Sanctus, or in other words, the Holy Spirit. In the middle of Hod, Netzach and Malkuth is number 9, Yesod, symbolic for the Divine Trinity. In Christian Kabbalah, they say Yesod is the translating of spiritual concepts into actions that unite us with God. Yesod is also ruled by the moon, for the moon represents the ethereal and the creation forces of the female. On the shield of the Trinity, Christians refer to this part of the shield as the third person of the Holy Trinity, for it is connected to the Holy Spirit and is said to be responsible for the powers of communication and being the symbol of human to God union. The Holy Spirit is responsible for enacting the contact with Abraham and God, and in Christian Kabbalah, Yesod is known as the symbol for the covenant between Abraham and God and their pact. So we can see the connection between Malkuth, the Holy Spirit, and Yesod, the Divine Trinity, and the reunification of the souls with the Divine. The path of Tau connects the infinite cycle of the Ten to the Divine number of Nine. Tau is like the Ankh and is symbolic for our connection to the Divine that we each have within us. It is the undefinable spark that illuminates the divinity within us when the light of Orion returns. This illumination of the Christ within us is also symbolized by Jesus being crucified on the path of Tau in this first attested version of the shield of the Trinity. Psalms 82.5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalms 82, 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. 
The next video, we will look at the twin soul's illumination and descent back to God consciousness.